Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over some of what I think are the most common structural engineering interview questions for fresh graduates and maybe a graduate with a couple of years of experience. Every interviewer is going to have their own style and preferences, and this is just kind of my view on it. You'll find that some interviewers love to chat and they love to try and sell you the company, love to tell you what the company does, what's great about them, and what kind of really good and exciting projects that they do. Other interviewers go really, really hard on these sort of super hard technical questions and some others are kind of a bit of a mix of the both. My preference would be to sort of start off with some kind of basic questions, maybe a few technical questions just to kind of gauge if the candidate is going to be kind of right for the position. The reason I kind of want to go down this route is to kind of basically see if I'm going to be wasting my time or not. If I think the candidate is going to be a right fit, then I'll go on and kind of explain more about the company and what kind of you know exciting projects that we're doing and what kind of projects we've got in the pipeline. You'll want to remember that the interview is a two-way process. As much as it as you, the candidate, trying to win them over, they're also trying to win you over by trying to sell you just how good the company is. So the most common types of questions which you'll be asked are going to be kind of related to your kind of technical ability. And there's going to be a whole host of different questions that the interviewer can ask. I think for sort of fresh grads or young graduates, the most common types of questions that they're going to ask you is going to be kind of why is shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams useful? Can you draw me the bending moment diagram for this 2D frame or can you draw me the bending moment diagram for this um, simply supported beam? I think those are probably the most common types of questions. You might be asked a slightly trickier question which is can you give me a couple of different ways that you can stabilize a building. But I think most importantly is to learn some of the most basic shear force and bending moment diagrams because I can almost guarantee you'll be asked at least one of these. If you've got a couple of years of experience they might go and ask you to design a steel beam just to prove to them that you can actually do it. So moving on to sort of communication skills and the kind of questions that they might ask you. The reason that they want to ask you communication related skills is because being able to communicate effectively is so important as an engineer and just in general, in life, being able to communicate really well is such an important skill. A form of communication is going to be sketching. And if you've been on my channel a lot, you know that I put a real emphasis on knowing how to sketch. And basically, I've been asked in quite a lot of interviews to sketch something. In probably one of my very first um, graduate job interviews, I was asked to sketch, I think, it was my favourite building and in other interviews I've been asked to sort of draw like steel to steel connections and some other stuff so being able to sketch and being able to show it off in an interview is really really important. Some things that which you might be asked to sketch is maybe sketch a foundation or sketch a raft and draw the bending moment diagrams for them. Another simple sketch that they might ask you to draw is a steel beam to a steel column connection using a fin plate. The reason that they're asking you to do this is just to really see or gauge how comfortable you are with a pen and pencil. While still on the subject of communication, you might be asked like a question not so dissimilar to this. Describe how you would resolve a problem with a client or a contractor after they've just sent you an email. This question is kind of open-ended, but what I'm really looking for if I ask this question is to basically to see if you're going to say that you'll pick up the phone and speak to them directly. Because they've sent you an email, it's very, very tempting to write them an email reply. But what I'm really looking for is to see if you're confident enough to just pick up the phone and speak to them directly, because speaking to them directly is so much more personable and you'll be able to resolve the problem that much quicker. So next, moving on to sort of management questions. And you might be thinking, well, I'm a fresh graduate. I don't have any management experience. In reality, you will have a lot of management experience and I can almost guarantee that they will ask you something about management. And it doesn't have to be project management. Everyone you know, is gonna have managed their own time. And at university, you definitely would have been part of sort of group projects. And even if it's just individual projects, it's managing your time to meet deadlines. That's all really, really important. So it's another thing which you can talk about in an interview. So a really typical question on management would be describe a time where you managed a successful outcome. Now there are loads of answers to this and I think the best thing to do is to draw up from your own experiences. But you wanna think along the lines of time management or timekeeping or managing tasks and delegating tasks if you are lucky enough to sort of work in a group project. At the end of the interview, there's always gonna be a time where you'll be allowed to sort of ask the interviewer 
some questions and I always think it's quite a good idea to come prepared with at least a couple of questions to ask because it shows that you're interested in the company. Always research the company first and try and avoid asking questions which can be easily found on a website. For example, don't ask them questions about their values, like don't ask them what are your core values. In almost all circumstances, most companies will have their core values on their website, so try and avoid asking stuff which can be easily found on their website. So some generic questions which you could ask could be along the lines of what is the career progression going to be like? Or what sort of projects would I be working on? What would my day-to-day -day workload be? When do you expect to make a hiring decision? If traveling is an issue, it might be worth asking how much traveling is going to be involved. You know, there's going to be projects all over the place and you might be asked to do site visits. Maybe not on your first day, but you will eventually have to go on site. And if traveling is going to be an issue, it's worth asking. I would avoid asking about salaries and overtime unless you've been asked a question. I think it's best to kind of avoid that topic. And here's just some general advice about the interview. Like I mentioned earlier, research the company first. It's always good to find out what the company's core values are and to see if they kind of line up with your own values. For example, if you really care about the environment and sustainability, and then you find out that that company really doesn't give a shit about that, that company is not going to be for you. So there's no point of wasting everyone's time, you know, doing an application and going to an interview for a company you don't really want to work for. So basically just do your research. The next tip is get to the interview on time or just be there early. You're not going to be penalised for getting there early. In fact, it might make a really good impression that you're early. But being late, even a minute late, can leave a really, really bad impression. So fuck's sake, get there early. Next tip, bring a portfolio of your work. Even if you're a fresh graduate and all you've got is university work, bring it. If you've got like an A4 pocket folder, um, just print some stuff off, like university projects, any design examples which you've done, throw them in there and just, you know, bring it to the interview. They may ask you about it, they may not, but if you've got it, it's well worth showcasing it off. If you're a graduate with a couple of years of experience, definitely throw in some project experience which you've got and some design examples. If you've got a tablet, I think it's a great idea to put your portfolio on there. It kind of shows that you know, you're using new technology and I think it's just a better way of bringing your portfolio. In the last few years when I've been going to interviews, that's exactly what I've been doing and it's always been really, really well received. Especially if you're able to do sketches on your tablet or your iPad, it's really, really a good talking point. And in interviews, I've been asked, you know, how do you do that? Like, what software are you using? And then, to be honest, I think in one interview, I've opened up the, the application concepts and just shown them a sketch there and shown them how to do it there. And it's just a real eye opener to sort of the new technology, which they may not know about. The next tip is try and stay calm in your interview. I know it can be really hard in an interview situation to sort of remain level-headed, but if you kind of take a deep breath before each question and before you answer it, that can really clear your mind a bit and just help you think of the right answer. Also, if you've been asked a question and you don't know the answer to, don't just point blank and say, I don't know. If you're going to say, I don't know, say, I don't know, but I think this is how you should do it and then try and explain your way through it. This shows the interviewer that you're kind of thinking of an answer and it kind of shows them your thought process. So it's much better than just, just saying, I don't know. So please don't do that. Also, a lot of interviewers will often try and help you out if you're struggling. So if you've said that you don't know and you're trying to explain your way through, they might kind of give you some pointers and try and point you in the right direction to try and nudge you into the right answer. So always try and think your way through the problem because if they're gonna hire you, that's kind of what it's gonna be like in the office. They may not point blank give you the right answer straight away if you ask them the question. They're gonna try and work the answer with you to try and tease the right answer out from you because the best way to learn is to try and think through it yourself. If every time you ask the question and someone just gives you the answer, you're never really gonna learn. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop me a comment. As always, thanks for watching, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers!